Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man, where we help you look, feel, and perform at your best. We have a very special episode of Fat Burning Man here today. It's with my buddy and ABC co-star, a true rock star of health and fitness, if there ever was one, Mr. Sean T. On this particular episode, if you're not familiar with Sean, he created a uh, Insanity. Now he's <laughs> sharing twin sanity. If you haven't heard, he and Scott uh, recently uh, added twins to the family. So they have two little boys uh, who are almost a year old now. And, and Sean, in this particular episode, shares a lot of critical advice for folks who might be struggling with a lack of sleep, a lack of time, especially if it's due to uh, infant children, uh, as is often the case. So in this episode, we also really dig into what's happened over the course of the past few years since the TV show and since he last came on uh, the Fat Burning Man show. We talk about what's happened to social media over that time. We talk a bit about reality television, how that enters into the whole equation. But mostly, do you ever feel like you're in the spotlight on social media? Uh, for, for Sean and I, we talk about this a little bit in this interview. We, we, since we were kids, mostly by choice, we've been in the spotlight. And uh, what's happened with social media now that we're all carrying around video cameras and cameras in our pockets, um, not just ourselves for taking pictures of ourselves, but also everyone else has cameras. We we all feel like we're in the spotlight pretty much all the time, especially on social media. And with that comes public scrutiny. And with that also comes the dreaded trolls. So uh, Sean, in case you don't know, is one of the greatest motivators. And whenever I'm feeling down, he uh, definitely gets me in the right mental state to feel like I can do anything again. And so on this episode, we talk about uh, how Sean has dealt with trolls over the years and his advice for anyone who is subjected to negativity on the internet, social media, or even in real life. He's got some one critical piece of advice that I'll say for the interview that he shares. But before I get too carried away, here's a note that just came in from, uh, from Neil that made me crack up. He says, hi, Abel, I listened to your most recent podcast, excellent as always, with Mark Hyman. I was surprised and stoked that you read out the email that I sent to you earlier this year. Thanks for that. In that email, I mentioned my 22-pound weight loss after 40 days and then stated a further goal of going from two uh, going from 204 pounds to 190 pounds. I wanted to let you know that I smashed that goal and I am on my way to, I think, setting in around 175 or 180 pounds. Progress is a bit slower now, but is still happening. The wild way of living is wonderful. Thanks, uh, Neil. Neil, thank you so much for sharing yet another note of your progress. 22 pounds in 40 days is better than I did when I first uh, started eating and, and living this way. And I'm totally psyched that you continue to have momentum and know that once you get to your uh, desired weight and body composition, more importantly, that uh, there's a whole different ball game going on there. Um, and, you know, it's not necessarily easier or harder. It just comes with different challenges. So make sure to keep in touch. And uh, I'd be happy to help you out if you have any questions. But mostly, I, I just love hearing from folks like you. So uh, if if any of you have a story to share, then please get in touch. The easiest way to do that is just go to fatburningman.com. Uh, the name of this show, and if you don't know, at that website, I have over 250 episodes for free of this show, free of outside sponsors, no corporate overlords or anything else like that. But anyway, just go to fatburningman.com and uh, sign up for the newsletter and just reply to my email address. I try to read every single one. I reply to as many as I can. Uh, but anyway, you can write me directly also at abel at fatburningman.com. Uh, you can also leave a comment wherever you're listening to this show. Leaving a review always helps. Give a little boost in the rankings, which means that other people who might be struggling with their health right now can be helped by this free show. So I really appreciate your support. Now, uh, <laughs> in other news, you may have heard that in the past year or so, I've been secretly recording uh, hundreds of virtual reality and 360 degree music videos, as well as uh, adventure videos, so like virtual tours. And uh, we also, to help basically pay the bills and make sure that we can create our 
own content independently, we created our own new health company called Wild Superfoods. And uh, if you stay at, <laughs> until the end of this episode, then you can even listen to an original tune that may inspire you to eat some more vegetables. It's called Cook Up Your Veggies in Bacon Fat. And I wrote it accidentally live on the spot in a fit of musical mayhem. So if you're interested in, in any bit of <laughs> that silliness, um, know that a lot of the songs are quite satirical. I'm doing what's called live looping, where I'm playing multiple instruments at the same time and recording them live in real time and then singing over that. So it turns into a circus sometimes. It's, it's uh, quite entertaining to do. I hope it's entertaining on the other end as well. So we've also been sharing nature hikes and, and basically tours of cool places uh, in North America right now. We're hoping to expand that in the future. Uh, but basically, these, these new videos and this new content uh, makes it so you can explore in 360 degrees. You can look around the entire environment that we're filming, which is difficult to explain, but pretty cool to experience. Uh, and just a quick tip, if you go to see any of the vid videos that are 360 on fatburningman.com or ablejames.com, uh, whether you have a phone or a tablet, you can click through, and when you watch it on YouTube, for example, not like within the embedded browser of the website, but when you like click through, then it gives you augmented reality, which means you can use your phone or your tablet to literally look around uh, the scene, which is incredibly cool because we go to places like uh, I tour Yellowstone with Allison, uh, parts of the super volcano there. Uh, we see a Yellowstone Park Ranger herding bison on the highway with his pickup truck. Uh, we also visit the real-life Oregon Trail, Serpent Mound in Ohio, the Great American Stonehenge. It gets a little bit ancient aliensy <laughs> for a while. But also we go on top of uh, Mount Washington in New Hampshire and the Appalachian Mountains. We go on top of uh, Mount Evans, hang out with some bighorn sheep. We got a lot of wildlife footage. So anyway, we've been very busy even though we've been off the grid for a while. If you're interested in checking out some of the nature, uh, we're calling it Adventure Tours with Abel. So, so if you're interested in that free series, then um, you can find that at abeljames.com. It's A-B-E-L james.com. And also, that's where you can find the music videos and, and uh, in the months uh, and years ahead, hopefully a lot more writing uh, and art and other very cool things to share that don't necessarily fit neatly into the health uh, category. So fatburningman.com, I intend to keep that and this show about health. And you'll notice that in the upcoming episodes of this show, I'll be talking, talking a bit more about uh, technology and its, its effects on us, how we can use it hopefully as a tool for good and also not be taken advantage of uh, some of the more negative aspects of technology that are not only happening right now, but definitely looking at us from the future. And it's getting pretty gnarly. We end <laughs> with a question about what's going to happen when uh, Sean is, is raising his twins in a world where people are jacking into the internet using brain implants. <laughs> so anyway, to get his take, make sure you uh, hang on to the end of this episode and also you'll get a bonus song on this episode and, and future episodes to come. All right, so once again, just head on over to ablejames.com for all of that fun. And of course, you can get this show over 200 episodes at fatburningman.com. And finally, if you'd like to support this free show and you happen to live in the US, hopefully internationally soon, then you can support us by checking out wildsuperfoods.com. These are the best uh, health supplements that we could find and share with you folks. We've been taking them personally um, Allison and myself and a lot of our friends and family for many years now, we've been a lot slower than I wanted to be getting this out there to you, but we finally launched. So be sure to check out wildsuperfoods.com. And if you do happen to live abroad and you'd like to support this show, please leave a review or check out one of our educational programs in cooking, fitness, or nutrition at fatburningman.com. All right, on to the show. In this episode with Sean T, you're about to hear how to be yourself, even when you're starring on a reality TV show. Easier said than done, let me say. What it's like to gain 50 pounds in your 20s, then drop it in your 30s and keep it off. How to deal with trolls on social media, and much, much more. Let's hang out with Sean. 
This episode is brought to you by listeners like you and Future Greens. Let me ask you something. Did you eat your veggies today? All of them? Believe it or not, fewer than 10% of adults and children in America get their recommended fruits and veggies in daily. That is absolutely atrocious. And many millions of us are suffering from disease, obesity, and ill health as a direct result. So my wife Allison and I decided to do something about it. Now you can double your intake of fruits and veggies in less than 60 seconds without the sugar or carbs. We're excited to bring you our new superfood greens powder called Future Greens to make it easy to get organic, nutrient-dense veggies in every day, no matter where you are. Future Greens is packed with vitamins, minerals, and filling prebiotic fiber from whole organic veggies, sprouts, algae, and berries, including kale, beet, parsley, collard greens, cauliflower sprouts, broccoli sprouts, spirulina, chlorella, blueberries, raspberries, and much more. Since Future Greens is preserved, you can get your greens on even when fresh produce, salads, and smoothies are far out of reach. Future Greens makes getting nutrition easy, and it tastes great if I do say so myself. Future Greens is a smart and convenient source of nutrition for disaster preparedness, road trips, camping, athletics, and more. It travels great in the car, on the plane, or in a spaceship. Just make sure you activate artificial gravity before opening. Basically, it's like vegetables from the future. So if you're looking to increase your energy and health without the crash from caffeine or sugar, meet your new best friend, Future Greens. As a listener of Fat Burning Man, you can get a 20% discount to try it yourself right now. Just visit fatburningman.com forward slash greens to get over 20% off when you subscribe and save. You'll get our coolest new concoction from Wild Superfoods called Future Greens. Again, just head on over to fatburningman.com forward slash greens to get over 20% off your purchase. We'll see you there. All right, folks, this is Abel, and I am so happy to be here today with Mr. Sean T., who is a true rock star of the fitness world. He's a TV host, creator of the best-selling fitness programs Insanity, Hip Hop Abs, and Size. He shared the stage with Val Kilmer, danced with Mariah Carey, and even choreographed for the NCAA Final Four halftime show. This dude, he's got range. We got to know each other, actually, co-starring on an ABC TV show, which you may or may not remember, called My Diet is Better Than Yours, which I got to say was a really crazy way to get to know somebody. But Sean, it's been way too long. So glad you're here. Thanks, man. I'm so glad. So happy to see you. I'm glad I'm here, too, um, you know, talking and speaking with you and your, I'm gonna, I don't want to say your followers, but your your extended family, if I, if I will, is always great. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Speaking of family, congratulations to you on Twin Sanity. Tell us, tell us a little more about that. Let's catch up with Sean. That is layered beyond layer. So there'll be 10 months um, on September 17th. Uh, so that is pretty spectacular. Yeah. The first three months were hell on earth. Yeah. Because... I don't ever like to say that having one child is easier than having two at the same time. Yeah. But I will tell you that having two children and on top of being a new parent was one of the craziest experiences ever. As slow as it went in the first three or four months, now looking back, it went by so fast. Yeah. And I understand why people say, oh, you know, I'll have another one. Because when people told me, you know, told Scott and I, Oh, you know, like you'll have more in the first three months. We were like, never again. <laughs> and now, now that they're hitting a stage where they go down, they go to bed a little easier. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, I can do this again. Because the second time around, you kind of understand that they're going to be okay. Sure. Because when you have a new child, you know, you check to see if they're breathing every 15 seconds. You know, they don't make noise for five minutes. You're running in there. If they make a noise, you're it's the craziest thing. But um, it's great. It's, it's, it's extremely hard. Um, full, full disclosure, the first three months, like Scott and I never fought so much before in our lives. Is that right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it, you know, so my advice to people is 
um, it's very hard to understand this if you haven't been through it, but your reaction is amplified. Your reaction to anything, to the kids, to your spouse, to yourself is amplified by like, I want to say at least 20. You know, when your your happiness is amplified, your stress is amplified, the fact that you aren't sleep is amplified because you probably only get one good night's rest every 20 days, right? So when you're having a conversation that, you know, you and your spouse might have another day that might be a little uncomfortable where you can say, oh, I didn't like this or I did like this or, you know, can we communicate this way? Mm -hmm. And and a disagreement might last three to five minutes. You know, this is like layered on layered of no sleep, trying to take care of a kid, nervous that you're doing the right thing. And then two people having a going into a new experience, trying to raise two kids and taking on, you're taking the baggage from when you were raised into this experience. And you were raised in two different places with two different households, two different parents. Now imagine that, you know, coming, all this experience is happening one time. Uh, And it was just, it was crazy. It was, I mean, we did great because Scott and I have like an amazing foundation of, you know, he's my best friend. You know, it's, I mean, we have, we have such an amazing foundation. However, this really tested us. Not like if we were going to get a divorce or something like that. Right. It just tested us in terms of how well we actually need to communicate for the next 18 plus years, you know, and, and beyond. But I'm just saying, especially when we have the kids in our household, you know. So it's, um, it's crazy. So how do you, I mean, you, you have new twins, you're not sleeping at all. How do you start the day and then go and get, you know, hundreds or thousands of people psyched up with the right mental attitude when like you've been fighting and you're strong out and like, how does that work? Uh, it's, so I will tell you this, it was crazy cause our boys were born two months early. So we were actually in the oh. NICU for three weeks wow. in another state. Then we get home and then right away, about a month after we get home is when I go on my book tour. And so one of the things that I learned at the the very first day that I actually taught my very first group exercise class is I had to realize that teaching a class is not about me. So a lot of people make the mistake when they speak or when they teach class or something where it's a, it, it's a, it's a career of having to give, mm-hmm. you know, give of yourself so that people understand they make the mistake and go on saying, Hey, when I teach, when I teach class, I'm getting my workout too. Or when I go and speak, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm building myself up too. Yeah. And so the only way for me to actually get through that was to go back to the foundation of who I was in that very first day of teaching, which is Sean, this class is not about you. <laughs> this class is literally to motivate and inspire and take from what you know that's going to get you through this workout or get you through this experience um, if it's vocal and you have to give that. I think, Mm -hmm. you know, Lewis Howes talks about, you know, serving, like just being a, not a servant, but, you know, kind of like a missionary to the people, you know? And so um, that was how I was able to get, that's how I'm able to get through the day even now because, all of the content that I put out in order for people to understand who they are by the content that I put out, they have to understand that this is coming from an extremely transparent place. Just like yesterday, I, I was going through an own, my own issue and Scott helped me through it. And I post that not like, Oh my gosh, I'm having a great breakfast with my husband in a smiling photo. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you what's happening and how I got through it. And that's how I'm able to get through stuff. You know, even today, with the babies and, and, you know, owning a business, being partners with different businesses and companies and, you know, coming in to be on your show, you know, how do you gather the energy to do that? But you find exciting things about why it is that you do what you do. So it doesn't matter what you do in your life. You have to go into every situation with how am I going to, if it's, if, if it's your job, how am I going to make the company that I work for the best that it can be, even Mm -hmm. if you hate it, because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you leave there, it's you're leaving your legacy behind. And so instead of taking negative energy into my day, just because I didn't sleep or, you know, whatever the case may be, 
I'm going to say I need to leave uh, like a positive imprint on this situation or it's going to affect me beyond. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to go into work with a bad attitude. And then I and then my other employees, they see me have a bad attitude or my coworkers. And then what happens? Then that coworker tells the other coworker, oh, my gosh, Sean T has a bad attitude. And then it filters through the room <laughs> yeah. where if I came in being my if I, if I have a bad day, of course, I had a bad day. Right. But if I come in saying I'm going to utilize the energy of creating and, and inspiring and motivating, you know, money to be made from the company or the message of the company is going to put out. And then you'll have people come to you and instead of them saying like, oh, my gosh, this person has a bad attitude. It's like, oh, thank you today. Is everything OK? Like, how are you feeling? Yeah. And you can say, you know, I'm going through something. And then it becomes more of a like, oh, this person worked really, really hard. And I didn't even know that something was wrong with them. You know what yeah. I mean? And then it causes people to want to help and, and bring positive energy to you instead of you bringing negative energy to a place. But I say all that to say that's what having a kid and being a new parent, kids, plural, twin sanity is like, you know, because you have, as they say, burning a candle on both ends. Well, this end, you have to burn the candle. And on this end, you can actually add wax to the candle. Like you have, you really can. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. You know, I was doing a live stream today and one question that came in that I think would be good to ask you actually is, um, she basically said that during the day she does well, she eats what she's, what she wants to. She, um, does a good job at work everything's cool. But at night when she gets home, she is mentally and physically exhausted, raids the fridge, eats a bunch of things that she doesn't, uh, she knows she doesn't want to, but she does anyway. And then, then she feels even worse. So how do you get out of that rut, especially for someone who is, you know, not necessarily well slept and, and someone who is just exhausted? How do you still keep it together? Um, carry the day. And I'm, and what I say is, you know, in my book, I talk about the secret backpack mm -hmm. and I say everything you've been through in your life, you've learned something from it. And so there's a positive tool. If you've gotten through it, you can put a secret backpack. So if you got a divorce, you know that you're, you're resilient. If it was a bad divorce, right? You're like, I'm resilient. I got through it. Things are great now. Or if you got fired from a job and you got a new job in a higher position, you can say, you know, I dig deep. You know, you can have your dig deep tool. So yeah. I say carry the day. If you are actually, if you have a great day, there's two things that are happening. When you have a great day, there's a lot of great things that are happening because you ate well, you may have communicated well, boom, 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 all, this thing, all these things. And then you have the opposite of that, which is the energy depletion, right? So now you have to balance that out. So in order to have a great evening when you get home, you have to and this might sound easy for someone who's single, but if you have a family and you have a spouse, or even if you're a single parent, it's about communicating with the people in the household Say, hey, I had a great day today. This is what I did. Kids or husband or wife or spouse or whatever. I need your help. I need to rest. But in the meantime, what you can do is say, let's eat healthy. Let's mm -hmm. do something really great today. Cause that's what I did during the day. So I'm carrying a day. Other thing that you're doing great by carrying a day is having great communication and having a positive attitude when you're talking about these things to the people that are home with you or yourself, if you actually live alone. And then you can say and be honest, okay, I need the rest. I need to turn off my phone. I need to put my phone in another room. I need to get an old school alarm clock because if the phone is in your room, you're going to scroll through Instagram, um, you, whatever the case may be. So you have to carry the day. Everything that amazing happened during the day, that needs to be the first line of defense when you get home to be able to create good energy in your house and then you go to bed a half an hour to an hour early. Mm -hmm. So one of the things That's that Scott and I started to do was we would be awake. In the very beginning, it was every three hours the kids had to eat. So you feed them, you burp them, you only have like an hour and 45 minutes pretty much to go to sleep, to try to get yourself to sleep, to wake up again. Right? right. And so you on this cycle and you know, when you're going through that, you just got to dig deep. I use my dig deep tool. I'm like, I pledged the fraternity I, and I still got honors. I, you know, I still made the Dean's list. Like I got to pull that tool out. I've yeah. done this before. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. But then when I move into the next stage of now the kids are sleeping 
through the night, I put them to bed at a certain hour. There's a balance between wanting to spend time with my spouse. So we would put the kids to bed at 7.30 and we would go to bed at 10, 30, 11 because we just wanted to spend time together. Right. And then <laughs> so, right. I just did a little head tilt. But then we realized, oh my gosh, we're still tired. So then we had to say, all right, so we have to go to bed at 9.30. Mm -hmm. So we cut back an hour of the time we spend together, but we make that time so much more valuable. So if it's an, if it's two hours of us on the couch or like somebody making dinner or whatever the case may be. So you have to literally be smart with your day, go to bed a little bit earlier, but stack the first part of you when you get home with positive energy, Yeah, you know, like take that positive energy because if you think like, oh my gosh, I'm tired and I had a long day and you people need to understand that. I'm like, they don't need to understand because you know what? They had their own day. Right. So if you're not, if you had this great day, then you need to carry it home. Mm -hmm. Now, also carrying a day. If you had a bad day, you know what I mean? The better part of your day should be coming home. Right. So what if you said, hey, let's sit down. Like, can I tell you guys about my day? It was a crazy day. This is what happened. Let's do something fun. Let's walk around the block as a family. Or for you, put on your headphones and go out for a stroll in the park. You have to, you have to literally take everything that happens for you during the day, put a tool in the secret backpack and carry the day into the evening and maneuver and do whatever you can to do that to have a great evening so that you eat healthy, you can get enough rest and you can wake up tomorrow and do what it is that you need to do. But more importantly, and I don't want to go too deep into this, but you should be waking up doing what you want to do anyway, because then it becomes a much easier day, um, much more manage manageable day. What are some things just to go along those lines that you've had to um, that may have surprised you that you've had to change or give up or make adjustments with just because it's such a monumental life change. I think the biggest thing is so I didn't really change anything. I said I was going to change. I was like, I'm not going to travel. I'm mm -hmm. going to do this. I travel more right <laughs> now. Now the boys and Scott come with Scott always came with me, but in the beginning, Scott and the boys didn't travel with me. And I've realized that was one of the things that like super stressed me out. Yeah. His dad told me it's Scott and I a very, a great tip. He's like, when your boys come, the boys need to become a part of your life. Not you change it. Cause a lot of parents are like they need to be home. They need to sleep. They need, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I get it. Like I understand schedule and we keep them on a schedule. Even when we travel, we just travel at the right times. Yeah. And now they come with us and they get on a plane. And every single time we get off the plane, people are like, Oh my gosh, your kids are so happy and they're so good. I'm like, wow. it's because we travel at the right times. You know, we'll take red eyes because we want them to sleep or we won't travel after 4 p.m. because we know they get antsy because it's getting toward the end of the day, you know. So <clears throat> I took the kids with me and Scott and like, let's go. And so what that did was it, it caused me not to to have the energy of, oh, my gosh, I miss them. And then I'm constantly calling Scott, like, what's happening? What's going on? And then. He's like, well, I'm feeding the babies. Like, I don't got time to give you a full lowdown in the last 13 minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's what you do. So, you know, you you just you monitor and adjust your life so that it literally it, it, it works. It just has to work. But you have to do the work. You have to you have to bring your world, the new world into your world. And so that really helps out a lot. Yeah. Now, to, to shift gears a little bit, because there's so much to talk about, um, I, w I want to make sure that we cover on technology a little bit, because it's, it's so much in our lives now in a way that it, it certainly was not 5, 10, um, and, and definitely decades ago. So it, it, it's changed so much. And one of the things we were talking about before um, this interview is that, you know, when everyone or most everyone has a Facebook account or an Instagram account and a Twitter account or a YouTube account or what have you, any of these, it's putting them in the, in the spotlight and uh, they're subject to public scrutiny and public mm -hmm. uh, trolls, I guess. They're subject to trolls. <laughs> so as someone who's been dealing with negative feedback, harsh criticism, uh, and, and the other th things that come along with that for a really long time, what sort of um, wisdom do you have to offer others who are being hurt emotionally by social media? So I'm going to start by saying there's a, I'm not sure if you've ever listened to it, but there's an, 
a, a podcast episode to This American Life. And one of the segments is, if you don't have anything nice to say, say it in all caps. <laughs> and it is absolutely brilliant how the narrator takes you on this journey that she had of being trolled yeah. and how it ended up. It is, it's amazing. But, and, I, and that segues into this. So when I started out this entire fitness thing, the only thing that l- literally was there was like my space, right? Mm-hmm. But it was so early in the days of social media that it was, it was almost like, um, it was like you were in a closet, like you could create your little safe space. Right. Yeah. And then it started to grow and grow and grow. And so when I remember when the lights would come on for my very first shooting of hip hop abs, I like, there, I didn't have to act like anything for me. I was just like, it's one of the reasons why I got the job actually, because they were like, cameras rolling and I'd be like, okay, I'm like, let's get it. You know what I mean? Like for me, there was no change in who I was from when the camera was off to when the camera was on. I'm like, yeah. this is my fucking B. You right. know what I mean? Like I'm like, I have no idea who you think was going to come up <laughs> on that screen, but this is who I am. And if you watch all of my workouts from hip hop ass to insanity, hip hop ass, rock and insanity and so on and so forth, yeah. you, you see the trend, the change, the growth of Sean. Right. You see who I was and you see where I was going and whatever and the confidence I have in myself. And I say all that to say, but I didn't have to do that. Getting people to comment on every single thing that I put out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't have that fear of they didn't like what I was wearing or they didn't like my hair or I acted too gay. However, there was this website called infomercial reviews that I looked at maybe five times. Yeah. And when I saw a couple negative, it would be like 99 positive comments. And that one negative comment, it would ruin my entire. Yeah. Right. So I was like, I I'm not it. looking at that. But, but then social media came out and it was like, holy shit, like people can say whatever they want. Yeah. But I say that to say, you know, people make a lot of mistakes when they get an Instagram account or when they start to promote on Instagram or they mm-hmm. start to just show who they, who they are. Mm-hmm. And I say that to say, just like I did when the lights came on with hip hop abs, I'm like, this is who I am. The more you show who you really are, without that photo being filtered or without that video camera rolling or your phone, the more you show the person on the other side, the less trolls you'll get. It it literally, I know people don't think that that's the, people don't think that that's the recipe, Mm -hmm. but it is the recipe. And you want to know why? Because not everybody is as beautiful as Beyonce when she gets made up and her hair done right. on the cover of a magazine with her multi-million dollar businesses, right? Like, she's beautiful. And Beyonce will probably tell you this, but when she put when she wipes off the makeup with her Neutrogena face wipes, not that she uses Neutrogena <laughs> face wipes, I do. Um, <laughs> when she wipes off the makeup and she takes the bobby pins out of her hair, and she's home in her pajamas in that shirt that she had for five years because it's just comfortable. You know what I mean? Like you guys are following a legend who is branded to say like, these are my songs. This is where I come from. This is my life, Mm -hmm. but this is my life in the spotlight. Right. But the majority of people in this world can't afford Neutrogena face wipes. First of all, because they're expensive as hell. And number two, They can't get made up every day. And so when you try to make yourself look like something that you're not, that's the biggest mistake you can make because that's when people start ripping on you. And if people Mm. start ripping on you, I mean, yes, people rip on you anyway. But when people start ripping on, for the most part, things that you know is not even true about you anyway, like you filtered the photo. You know what I mean? You filtered the photo. So you're going into this entire situation not being authentic to who you are. So you're going to get mad that somebody commented on it. Mm -hmm. But if you go into the situation being like, this is me, this is what I look like going to work, be it in a suit or your uniform or whatever it is. And you're like, this is me. People relate to that real you, because there's a lot of people that go to work in a uniform. And there's a lot of people that go to work in a suit. And a lot of people hate putting on a suit. And a lot of people hate putting on a uniform. But if that's who you are, 
You know, like I, most of the time I post photos, I look a hot mess. A lot of times, like especially videos, like I posted a video today, me sweating. I looked at that video, I was like, oh my God, if I actually look like that on screen all the time, I wonder if I would sell as many, you know, streaming workouts that I do. But at the same time, I'm like, I, I, re, I refuse to care. And I, it's easier for me to not care because it's who I am. So my thing is, if you are literally transparent, like, if I were to post a picture of this coffee cup, you see this coffee cup has, uh, I don't know if people are watching or listening, but it has stains on a coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Like most people will wipe that coffee cup clean because they wouldn't want that stain to be right. running down the side. And if you've seen the show Black Mirror, the episode where you get certain amount of stars put, like people can, can rate you on right. social media, you know, like, the woman Ugh. bit the cookie and made sure the bite was perfect. And like the heart was in the froth of the top of the coffee cup. And she took the photo. Like if you have to always filter your life like that, mm -hmm. then you're going to always be miserable. And trolls are going to bother you even more. And I say all that to say that if you are 100% authentic to who you are, and let's say 95, because you know we all want to look good once in a while. You know you do a little, a little swipe <laughs> over <laughs> If you want, if you're 95 authentic to who you are, the trolls, it doesn't matter what they say because you're like, this is you and yeah. you can't deny your truth and no one else can deny your truth. And is it easy? Absolutely not. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to put yourself out there. Yeah. But the thing is, it's called social media. So if you're going to put yourself out there, then you got to deal with, with what comes your way. Yeah. The flip side of that is if you are a troll and you had your account private, you need to stop talking on people when people can't say anything back to you. Yeah. But, you know, it goes back to the whole thing. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if you're being you, then no one can penetrate your force field of positivity. I've been called a I've been called whatever. I've been called every name in a book. You know, people don't like me because I'm gay. People don't like me because I'm black. People don't like me because... I'm in a same-sex marriage with two kids. They're like, oh, my God, the kid needs a mother. I've been told I've been a, I'm have been i a waste of a man. You know, I've been told, like, everything in the book. But I'm like, what? what? And so my, my response is, so what do you want me to do about it? Yeah. Because <laughs> like, if I tried to please you and everyone else that didn't like me, I'd be miserable. So I'm going to be happy being me, and you can stay miserable because <laughs> I'm me. You can stay as, you can be as mad as you want, and if... Right. It, Oh, and if I ruined your day because I'm in a relationship with an amazing guy who, you know, doesn't cheat on me and is extremely honest with me and we have a great relationship. If you mad at that and your man is cheating on you or your girl is cheating on you or you fight, like, you know, what I mean, you got all this other stuff going on but, and you're you don't even have a perfect, quote unquote, heterosexual life, but you mad about the fact that I'm super happy in my mm -hmm. homosexual lifestyle, then, you know, uh, you know, good for you. Like, I'm so happy that you're mad. I'm so happy that you're mad because I'm not, I'm like really great. You know, I have a shirt, I have a shirt on um, my apparel line that says kindness is my ammunition because what do I need to be mad for? Yeah. You know, why am I going to be mad? Cause you got mad of who I, at who I really am. I'm <laughs> sorry about you. Especially if they're just typing with their thumbs or on a keyboard. Like, I would love to see someone say that to you in person, right? And, and maybe, and I'm, I might be being a little optimistic here, but maybe technology is going in a place where it's becoming more human instead of less, right? Because, like, the Instagram filter has been going on for long enough, and people have been looking down at their hands, their phones in their hands for long enough. Like it's definitely, if you watch broken mirrors or whatever, it's definitely going places. It's going to di we're different places, but I hope that maybe, and I realized this kind of doing the live stream today where I just like in between interviews, I went on uh, Facebook live, I think for the second time ever, like not even knowing like which buttons are which or whatever. And I did not get a single hateful comment. I didn't get like a single troll. Um, and I wonder if, if part of that is because it's live, because I could actually be like, oh, I can deal with this, right? Like being a performer for a while, you deal with the hecklers. And if you have to do it in, in person, it's like we're more experienced than the people heckling us in person. But mm -hmm. if, like you said, if you can't 
ever address it or comment back. There's it somehow feels unfinished and a little bit gross. But um, for anyone who's who's listening to this or watching this and experiencing some of that, just like what what Sean said, you get the 99 positive things in that one little negative comment, whether it's based in in any bit of reality or not, somehow just like stabs you in the heart and you, you can't get it out is what it feels like at the beginning. Well, I, I think the biggest issue is like, I call it hiding behind the keys. Yeah. Well, and that's what it is. Yeah. The biggest issue is that if you're a person like me who I'm not afraid of confrontation at all, <laughs> no. like there's zero percent of me. <laughs> you're ready for it. I, I'm, I'm here for all of it. Right. Yeah. So when you can't respond to somebody, because you know, if you really think about it, when people finish typing a message on your Instagram post that's negative, mm-hmm. when you like, so for you, you change people's lives every day by the information you provide and w- what you provide to people, right? Like people who say, you know, Abel, you know, you changed my life, you know, the fat burning man, like if, when they give you all of these things that literally enhance their life and their power, when they finish typing that message, they feel really good. They feel really good, right? And and you can rest assured that because they wrote that message that you changed their life or you could be their hero or whatever the case may be, or you help change the way they eat, they're sharing it with people in like a great way. Yeah. And then th- and that's how people get to know who you are and they get to experience your positivity. Let me tell you what happens when the trolls roll through. <laughs> this is what happened when the trolls roll through. They be like, uh, you know, Shanti, I don't like insanity. Blah, 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 blah. Guess where they're going? They're going to the next page and yeah. writing another comment. on. They're not going to their friend and be like, you know, I don't like Shanti. You know, I don't like Shanti. Um, they're, not, they're not doing the same um, positive, you know, like I call it the positive tree, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you're impacting someone's life in a positive way, it's yeah. a tree, you know? On social media. Yeah. But when people are leaving a message like, oh, my God, I don't like you or whatever the case may be. Or like, you no, know, their friend is going to be like, what? A, a real friend would be like, why are you telling me this? Why are you trying to bring me into your world? Right. Mm-hmm. Unless it's a friend that likes to gossip. And here is this isn't based on science. This is based on 40 years of <laughs> you of um, experience. Yeah. When you have a bunch of people who gossip, there is a point at which that gossip circle become it stops because they're going to eventually encounter somebody who's going to say listen like i don't care or they're going to they're going to be what i call you know there's white noise i call it the white face not like in the white face but like the white look <laughs> of like sorry the it's white look of like you know white noise is supposed to like white noise like drowns out sounds around you like you have the white look which is like, yeah they're like they're not giving you anything back because they're like i don't care like i have no connection to that and that's what negative negativity does this, you know, and eventually mm-hmm. it'll implode because you're being negative, but positivity, like you have to focus on those people who are saying great things about you and who are, you know, even giving you positive feedback because that's the word that's getting out. That's right. Even this yeah. entire thing that happened with Serena. I'm not sure if you heard about the, I did, yeah. or if people would listen to the commentary in the very beginning of what she was saying, and they say, they heard her say, I would never do that. You know, I've never cheated. I'd much rather lose than cheat. Mm -hmm. And if they saw the beginning of that exchange, then people would have a much better way. Even at the end of the day, at the end of the ceremony, when people were booing the announcer and everyone was like, they were booing the the girl who won. No, they weren't booing the girl who won. They were booing when the guys started talking. Mm -hmm. When they got to Osaka and Serena, the players, they would have cheer for them because they know that whatever they know that they weren't the ones that messed up the match. And so people have, of course, people have a different opinion than me and it's totally fine. I'm saying all that to say you look on social media and it's amazing how people have wrong information, you know, because they just want to get involved Mm -hmm. in being heard and being heard saying the wrong, like saying things that are negative. Like I'm, I'm telling you, if you focus on saying such positive things, this is like, I like positivity is so unbelievably amazing. And for people out there who have a hard time doing it, I'm saying do it. Speak positive. Your your life 
will be so much better. It will enhance in such a great way. Great things will happen to your life. For people who are religious out there, you know, I grew up in a, my grandfather was a pastor. So let me tell you, I was in church on Sunday school. I was in church at the, you know, 11 o'clock service. I was at the service. I was in church on Wednesday, prayer meeting. I was in choir rehearsal. I know. But one of the things that, you know, religion and positivity have in common is that when you are putting out like great energy and it says, you know, in the Bible, it says when two and three are gathered together, most of the time they're praying and worshiping great things happen. Mm -hmm. And the same thing in the positive world, I'm not getting religious. I'm just saying in the positive world, when, when you, when two and three people are gathered together to talk about positive things and positive change and being able to take a negative situation and be a positive, what are they doing? They want to filter that out into the world. And Mm so we have the power to, to be better than the negativity, but negativity is going to happen. And the very last thing I want to say because I know I talk a lot, but you say you talk about things that I'm passionate about. That's why you're here, man. Let me tell you why reality shows that are like super dramatic and and fighting and stuff like that. Let me tell you why they work. Because the human always wants to feel like they're better than the other person. Mm-hmm. It's like I almost think it's a you know, how like you never teach a baby how to yawn. They just do it. And you're like, yeah. oh, my God, it's so cute. The first time your baby yawns. Right. I don't think that I think because of the fact that we are humans, we automatically want to be better. It, it, it goes back to the um, to the barbaric days. You know, people used to gather to see people, like, <laughs> you know, bash each other. They so we have that. <laughs> right. I know. Oh, UFC. We have that. We have that that innate feeling to want to be better, to compete, to make money, to put food on the table. We have it, but people are using it in a very, in the worst way you can. They're using it to make people feel bad about themselves or watch these shows so that they're like, Oh my gosh, like the drama of it all. And it becomes amazing because people want to feel better than the other person, Mm -hmm. but they're also watching it, especially these housewife shows. They're watching because these women still have portrayed that they have millions of dollars and like these great businesses and these awesome cars. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you can't have both, you know, you can't have both of those things. So I want people to know that do watch those shows. It's like, okay, I get it. You watch for entertainment, hashtag no judgment, but kind of, um, you know, but the, the flip side of that is, OK, do you think that they act like they acted like that in a meeting to get that million dollar deal? Mm, they probably didn't. They yeah. probably had to be somewhat likable and then they have to morph into this person. So it's not really reality. So I say to people out there, don't you know, first of all, don't give power to these trolls because, you know what, they're forgetting about you the minute they go to the next page yeah. and don't. And don't feed into what you see on TV. If you use it as a mindless TV, great. You know, like I get it. You want to use, you wanna, yeah, I watch Big Brother and Survivor, you know, drama happens or whatever. <laughs> sure. But that's not me. You know, I'm going out there to be like, I'm going to act like that person acted, yeah. you know. So just be mindful of other people and how they feel. And I think it'll help. Well, yeah. And that's another good point, too, because uh, we get confused into thinking that, like, when we're excited, or when we're in this like anxious state that it's better or that you want more of it, right? And that's one reason why I think you can read through this just like, oh, Sean, you've changed my life. And then like, Sean, I lost 50 pounds. And Sean, I've been watching your stuff forever and I love it. And it's just like, Sean, I hate you. And it's like, what? <laughs> you know, like, you're you yeah. a record back up. Well, actually, for me, when someone says I hate you, I say congratulations. I mean, you've been doing it correctly. <laughs> you've been doing it. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> what? But anyway, when that happens, like you feel it, right? You feel something happen to your body where you're like, it's almost fight or flight. It's almost like you're getting ready to have a physical altercation with someone. And in the same way that you can get confused watching a horror movie, right? That you're like, I like this and it's all like exciting. But no, it's it's like arousing, but in kind of the wrong way. And, and what that mm-hmm. means is that it's grabbing your attention more than other things. So like negativity grabs more attention. And anyway, you know, it's like, all right. So we were on a reality show together. And mm-hmm. if, if it weren't, okay, so if it were a reality show of little children together and there are cameras there 
and you've got like 30 minutes or something like that, which means 21 or whatever, if you've got this little show. <laughs> and, and the cameras are panning around. You've got all these cameras and these kids. And like five of them are being really good. They're just like hanging out and like cooing with each other and cuddling or like playing with a little toy. And one of them's freaking out, like clawing at the walls, jumping up and down. Where do you think the camera's going to go? Right. And they're and going right to that crazy child. The whole which time. Which is one of my kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is Sander. He is that wild child. He would be the one going around like, wanting that everyone else is pacified but yeah they're gonna, gonna go be to be a that star <laughs> but anyway <laughs> you know i i think that that's a really um that that was the first tv show that i had been on so watching like the the people around me or the people in my life after that the way that uh i was treated differently after being on tv was a real trip to me um because people seemed to believe what they saw on tv more than like a podcast or a video call or like an actual speech that I would do. And that little bit of conditioning, or I don't know what that is, really freaked me out a little bit. And, and I think it's important that people, that people know, right, that like what you see on TV is showmanship, entertainment, kind of playing it up. It's, it's designed to get your attention, whereas reality is more like us talking right now because we're – we're just having a conversation and we're recording it. <laughs> I know. I always say, I always say in reality TV, like what they should really do is say, we're recording now. And the minute they say cut, that's when they should start filming. I know. Because like, you know, I'm not going to say I have favorites. However, you know, you were like my favorite on the show. I oh, couldn't come say on. that you were my show. favorite. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We were each other's favorite. We had a bromance. It's fine. But, uh, you know, I was just like, I was mad that I couldn't hang out with you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I was so mad. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I'm in Atlanta for these, this amount of time with this amazing guy. Like, we could, like, have fun. And they're like, you can't talk to them. I'm like, we can stand next to each other and not speak for hours on end. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, from the outside in, you know, Obviously, they edited you the way they wanted to be. Sure, but I mean, I mean, you're still likable. But I wish, I, I do wish people would have saw like, like our conversations that we just like had, just natural. It would have well, been so great. In the in the way that you coached the people there was, I'm I'm getting chills now just thinking about it because it was so powerful for everyone, including the trainers, uh, including the production staff. I'm sure, like there was energy in that room and stuff was happening you know it, you could feel it but um you know that doesn't really show up or does it translate on tv that's not like not it's not even to fault the people who are making tv really that's just not what tv is for yet i think maybe hopefully where social media is going or where we can bring it is is more like that maybe we can have real interactions and help share them with other people as well like it doesn't have to be all glitzy and with perfect teeth and ding and all shined up i'm glad that the world is is going away from that to some degree yeah i'm trying you know in this my, i have a new program coming out in january called transform 20 and one of the portions of this new production we're doing is a reality uh portion of it and the first meeting i had with him i said listen i'm like this ain't going to be no get pretty, like have the best lighting and makeup reality. I'm like, this is real. I want people to get real life, not sit down and tell me how great your week was. Cause I want to know, I, I'm like, I was like, I'm coming in hot. I'm coming in exactly how I am. And that's what we need to see. Like, we don't need to see, we don't just need to see tears of people struggling. Like we need to see real life. Like what are people really doing? Yeah. And with the experience, obviously that we had on the show and obviously seeing it after and how pretty it was. I mean, pretty is great, but from my experience in fitness in 20 years, people want to see what's really going on. Like yeah. how can I really relate? Because this is the first time for, for me to speak in a reality you know, I tell people, I'm like, I could care less about the before and after program because I have to picture mm -hmm. because you're not losing 80 pounds in six weeks. This program is six weeks. So if you think you want to lose 80 pounds in this six weeks then you need to go somewhere else where somebody's going to promise you something crazy like that. Yeah. I, you know, I want to get you to commit. But 
just speaking of reality, I'm saying this is what it is. Like, I want you to see what it is so you can get what it is and experience the real, real situation. Yeah. Now, just touching on that a little bit, like what are the things that have continued to work for you, especially up against like not sleeping that much, being more stressed, I'm sure, than, than you ever have been? Like how do you still make sure that you're, you're reaching your own goals, right? Having enough me time to actually do your own workouts or your own meditations or, or whatever. So there's two parts, um, and I might need you to remind me of some of that question when I after yeah, I get done talking. I'm sure it'll be somewhere forward. else. But. Right. Well, I know. Sorry, people. I love my it, friends though. out there. Um, you, this part you like. Digestive health is okay. has completely changed my life in such a way yeah. that it gives me. This is gonna sound really weird, and being able to correlate the two. But digestive health has given me, has added like six hours to my day. Like I feel wow. like before I had 24 hours in a day and it was cut short because I had a crying baby or two mm. and it was cut short because I had a meeting and it was cut short. But when I changed the way I felt on the inside, mm -hmm. it was like time expanded. Wow. And that's why eating is so, what you eat, I should say, yeah, is so important it's beyond and i've always known that but i've always kind of like also fought against well this is what i should be eating because the world says this is what i should be eating right or and what i should be eating because my body is saying this is what you should be eating mm -hmm. and when i changed that when i changed in the beginning of this year because i was like something has to change because I refuse to go back to eating McDonald's with zero time in a day, right? You know, obviously yeah. I wouldn't do that. I try to, I was like eating food, tons of foods with preservatives in it is not going to help me have more energy for these kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I was like, what do I have to do? And so I just started changing what I put in my body. And I, I went to a, I went to a, a, a super high plant based diet. Yeah. Um, because I don't know if it was the kind of meat I was eating or how my body was digesting it, but it's, I basically reset my body. So I went to a hot plant-based diet I, and fish and certain fish I cut out yep. and I ate, you know, wild fish and whatever. And it like completely changed my brain, my energy. It, I would be at wow. the end of the day yeah. and my eyes would, I would be driving and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to go to the doctor because I need glasses now. And I changed like some of the, I changed some of the foods that I ate and I literally was in a car, I think it was in a car with my assistant, Sam. And I was like, yo, I, I can see so clearly. Like it was crazy. Really? Or maybe I was Scott. Oh my gosh. But then. From cleaning up your diet. For cleaning up my diet. Yeah. So, and not like cleaning up. Cause I never really ate bad. It was like, what I, what am I actually putting in my body? And then, mm -hmm. so initially it was, you know, I was like. I'm not an extreme person, so I'm not, I'm never the person that's like, I'm never going to eat meat again, or I'm never yeah. going to drink alcohol again. But there was a, I went for a year and a half without drinking alcohol at all. And then I didn't eat meat for about five months. Wow. But not because I'm like, oh my gosh, like you shouldn't eat meat. It wasn't, right. had nothing to do with that. It was, I realized when I ate meat, it was like my body wasn't digesting things the right way. I even went to a point where I, you know, I was like, I'm a cut back on the amount of coffee. I, eat. I was like trying different things to give my body, you know, how I, I wanted to feel great. Yeah. And I'll tell you what happened. And this might be, I'm sure you probably talked about this on your podcast before, but poop, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it was like, it was like my body, my body completely changed the way it processed what I put in it. And wow. going to the bathroom for the first time in my life after 39 years was a pleasurable experience where before it was always like, and I would go out to dinner and even though I would try, I would say, Oh, I want the salad. I want this. It was always something that was happening inside. And I would get in the car wow. and I would say to Scott, I'm like, Oh my gosh, my stomach hurts so bad. So wh whether it was gluten, whether it was grains, whether it was me and I'm not mm -hmm. like, again, I don't want to share too much about my diet because I don't think it's about my, right. what I eat. Exactly. I, I'm saying like for people to pay attention and take the good information and apply it to what you eat and, and, and create a sense of 
create your own nutrition plan, right? Yeah. With the great stuff that you know. Um, obviously, you look um, knowing you helped a lot because you're you're like so motivational about what to put in your body, and you make it not a chore, you know, which I think was. Thanks, man. And you're not a bully about it because there are yeah. a lot of people out there that are bullies about like, you should eat this way, you should do that. And you're not. You're just very matter of fact and you give the science. And so, you know, obviously you're a great source for me. Um, Thanks, man. But I was just I was just able. So that's the first part to be able to like if you if you feel really good on the inside, not only are you going to clean up your nutrition but your energy level is going to skyrocket to a point where you do feel like you have more times your day. Cause yeah. when do you feel like, when do you feel like you don't have a lot of time when you're tired, mm -hmm. you know, when you're tired and you're like this day, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a catch 22 really. It's like this day is taking forever, but the day is taking forever cause you don't have the energy. But imagine if you had the energy to do a lot of stuff, your day expands because you feel like you're actually being productive and you get more work than sitting there like this, waiting for that next cup of coffee with your hand on your head, you're moving, you're shaking, you're gone. And so for having kids, people are like, well, I don't have time, so I only can stop at McDonald's or I need to stop at Subway and no shade because I know it tastes good. So I'm not a, I'm not a, yeah. a nutrition bully. I'm not. However, I would just have you ask yourself, when I eat that, does that give me the energy that coffee gives me? Mm -hmm. You know, does that give me that power energy that that pre-workout gives me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what are you putting in your body? And it's still, you know, it's, it's a, it's, um, it's an ongoing, it's a journey. Like people say, you know, fitness is a lifestyle change. It's a journey. And so you have to constantly make, you know, monitor and adjust what you eat. So your body feels good. So anyway, that's the first part of your question. The second answer is, for me, for the first time in my life, I had to know when I had to ask for help. For the longest time, it was Scott and I, and we had we had people in our company, and we obviously had, we had a great team, but I had to make a point to hire new people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would say most of the time our superpower is also our kryptonite yeah and so you could say you know I'm, I'm really successful because i can do this and i have i have a talent of writing or speaking and you have all these things and you, you go 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 because you like to dig deep but a lot of times that person doesn't like to get help from other people because they feel like they can do it all yeah you know and i feel like that's something that scott and i both had in a different way we had this idea that we were superman mm -hmm. you know what i mean but doing and different jobs right we're doing different jobs but what we realize is and what i realize is like i can do it but i would expand my day if i had help and mm -hmm. so not being afraid to ask for help especially bringing in two boys so i hired kind of like an online manager for like my online business mm -hmm. and then i hired an an executive assistant who for you know, most people look at an executive assistant as an assistant, but I feel like this person should literally manage your life, your energy, your, you know, so we mm -hmm. hire some great people. And so it maybe you're not in a situation where you're, you can hire people, but you are in a situation where you can control who's in your life. Yeah. And that's where I'm going to. It's like, if you keep, in my book, I talk about you're the average of the five, five closest people to you. Mm -hmm. And so you have to do an assessment of who is actually in your life because in order to get things done and to be productive, the people around you have to be providing you with positive energy. And I'm not saying that every day is going to be a great day or the people you surround yourself with are not going to have a bad day. But when those people have a bad day, if they're people who are positive and, and inspiring to you and they have great energy, helping them is not going to be a chore. You know, it's when you have to help the people that don't want to help themselves that drain from you, that's when it becomes a chore and that's when it becomes taken away from your day. Whereas when you have great people around you, when everybody's feeling good, you are so productive because everybody's feeling good. And if one person's not feeling good, you're still productive because you're going to be productive and want to help this person be productive to bring yourselves back to the top. And so food and being able to, to, open myself up to help has been two major things that's helped me on that second point, especially because there are a lot of like type a personalities. I'm a recovering one myself. How do you, uh, 
come to that moment where you realize that like you can take the horse blinders off, right? Where you, where you said, I, I realized that I had, or, or I needed to ask for help in one way or another, or I really should because everyone's lives would be better. Like, how do you get to that moment when you realize that your head is down? Cause that's one of the biggest challenges, right? It's like, you're doing everything and you're too busy to realize that that's what you're doing and you're neglecting other things. You literally have to ask yourself, how can I be the most successful at X, whatever X is? How can yeah. I be the most successful father? For me, I say I have to invest in, you know, I call them world-class babysitters. Like people are going to teach my kid, have, I have to invest in that. Mm-hmm. So, boom. If I want to be the best boss, you know, which I don't even like the word, but the best team yeah. Yeah. leader, if you will, I have to have people who are like committed and are passionate about the same thing, same things that I want for my company. How can I be the best husband? I have to not always make it about what I want in a relationship and how much I can give and what I want to give and energy and how happy I want my spouse to be. So if I had these goggles on, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. None of this, I would be like, you know, I can take care of my kids. My mom did it. She was a single parent. She could do that. But my mom didn't have the same career that I had. Mm -hmm. Or as far as my job, it's like, oh, I can do it. I can, you know, I can build a website. I can teach myself how to do it. I can go to the store and, you know, do this. Or I can plan out my day to, to keep myself good energy. And I like, it's like, no, I can't do that. I need to have someone who's willing to do that and want, has a passion to help people feel great about themselves. Right. And then in, in terms of my life with, with Scott, you know, if I have to be like, well, if I'm always getting, you know, if I have my horse goggles, I'm like, I want to get, I want to get, I want to get, but like not realizing horse goggles makes the other person in your life you makes you makes them not visible and their miserableness not visible right but when right. you take those goggles off then you get help with your kids you hire amazing people who help you thrive and you give as much you can to your spouse cuz you realize that they're going to it's a reciprocating relationship so and you're yeah, admitting I mean, it's, it's basically like getting to the point where you can admit your weaknesses isn't it it's, that's an emotional thing. When you come to the Transformation Center, you've been there. The third word up at the top is transparency. Truth, trust, and transparency. The more transparent you are with yourself, the more you can admit to yourself mm-hmm. your shortcomings, your, you can admit the great things about you. Because some people don't even like to pat themselves on the back. I'm like, forget that. I'm going to the mirror. <laughs> Gorgeous. And I'm like, you know what, Sean? <laughs> you look really good today. Or I have to be honest and be like, bruh, you need some sleep. Right. You know what I mean? But the yeah. more transparent you are with yourself, you can fill your cup or you can say, all right, like I can't, I have some to give or let me empty this out. Cause the cup is actually almost overflowing, right? It's mm-hmm. like you have two sides of it. So transparency is just so important. And, and one thing I'll say when you are in a situation, this is more of a relationship thing, but when you're in a relationship, the more you can Blame yourself before you blame your spouse, Mm -hmm. the better the conversation is going to be. So if you and I, like as friends, you know, I'm going to bring up something that's real, but I'm being a little dramatic. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I haven't seen Abel. He hasn't called me. Like, I'm really upset about it. I'm not really upset about it because I know you're busy. (laughs) But before I call you and be like, Abel, I can't believe like we haven't seen each other in a year and a half or whatever. I'm going to be like, well, Sean, like you had kids, you you hired new people, you wrote a book, you had a book tour, uh, you've been, you know, like, I'm like, oh, well, I can't really blame Abel for that because I, if I look at the amount of months that I've been busy and did you pick up the phone? So before you go to your spouse and be like, you did this and you did this and you right. did this, so we haven't had sex or whatever. It's like, well, what have I been doing? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, cause I like the last thing, cause if I came to you and I was like, Abel, I, you know, I can't believe you haven't called me. You could be like, well, you ain't called me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It'd be different if I was like leaving all these messages for you and you're not calling me back. Or right. So um, anyway, if we're more transparent with ourselves and we can, not, I don't want to say blame, blame's a hard word, but if we can blame ourselves before we take our issues to, uh, out elsewhere, yeah. then we can see where our weakness lies. And when you are honest with yourself about your weaknesses, then you can, you can make that better and build like, on it. Take responsibility. 
Take responsibility for your own negativity, right? Before you give it to someone else. <laughs> it feels I don't know like. if you hear that, people. But that's a snack. <laughs> All right, let's let's ruin it now and and end because we're almost out of time with a really weird question because um, I can't really stop thinking about it. You hear about it all the time. It seems like that's the direction that some people want to go in. But you have, you have very small infant children right now. And they're going to be coming up in a world where it sounds like people are going to be plugging computers and the internet into their brains. Like, how do you think you'll handle the wackiness of the future with the next generation coming up? Like, how, how have you thought about that? Uh, it's very interesting you say that because Scott and I talk about that every day. So what we can't do is make our kids use a rotary phone, right? Mm-hmm. Like we can't do that because if we, if I went back to my grandparents and they saw how I'm actually being productive today by talking to somebody through a screen, yeah. my 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 grandfather talked about when he used to court my grandmother date, you know, we we call it online dating. When he used to court her, they lived in two different cities. He would write a letter, have to send that letter. She would write a letter and respond, you know, like that's how they got together. Now, if I told my kids, no, that's how you have to date the girl, (laughs) guy you date that, you know, if I told my kids that you'd be like, no, but that's what they think I should do. Right. So there's a balance and there has to be realistic to, they have to be able to grow up in a world that they can thrive and understand what the world is. Yeah. So for me to say when my kid is seven and they go to school that they can't have a phone is crazy, right? People be like, why would a kid need a phone? They have the teacher there. I'm like, you know what? The phone's only going to call Scott, me, and his brother. Yeah. But he's going to have a phone because that's the way of the world. They have to learn how to use it. What if I say, no, you can't have a phone? They're stuck somewhere. And the only thing they have is a, a, a iPhone or something. They don't, they're like, I don't know how to use it. That's yeah. crazy to me, right? So yeah. there's like people saying your kids shouldn't watch TV to their two. Well, you know what? Little Baby Bum is my best friend and I love it on Netflix <laughs> because it stops them from crying. It helps me make their food, go make their bath. And I know that they're not going to crawl off and climb on something that they don't need to do because they love Little Baby Bum. But I perform a little baby bump and I limit it to a certain time of day that they can watch it. Right. So it's all about the balance. Um, The one thing in terms of the filter, I call it Instagram. You know, Mm -hmm. I love Instagram, but I'm just saying because we were talking about the trolls of life. One of the things that I hope my way of or our way of instilling um, self confidence into our children is that when you do get eventually get on Instagram, there's two things that you need to do. You need to be transparent about what you post and you need to let go of the people who don't like you. My mother taught me one of the greatest lessons in my life. When I, when I would be sad that, you know, some people didn't like me, she was like, okay, so there's however many billions of people in the world, let's say five, six billion. She's like, okay, so there's she probably said 5 million when I was a kid, but you know, okay. So there's 6 billion people in the world. So these three people don't like you. Like, is it going to, is it going to ruin your life? And I'm like, well, I have to go to school with them. And she's like, okay, cool. But that gives you more time to go deal with the people that do like you and to do your work Mm -hmm. than to worry about the people that don't like you. And, but moreover, what, what do you love about school? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I'm really good at math. I make the honor roll and I love gym class. She's like, that's what's going to matter in your life. So before my kids post on Instagram, I'm like, you have to be self-confident. Like, are you self-confident? We're going to do a self-confident test. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to say you can't have a social media account. Yes, it's going to be blocked. Yes, I'm going to have the password. Yes, I'm, but I'm going to monitor what you post and what you say mm-hmm. and how you respond to people. Because if someone says, oh, my gosh, you're ugly, you say, thank you. I hope you have a nice day, too, because <laughs> I actually like who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like kindness is my ammunition. So I think it's being able to bring them into the world of social, you know, the black mirror, Mm -hmm. but also being able to be so confident with themselves that they don't let themselves affect them in a way, but you have to teach them that way. Last thing I'll say is I do it now. When my kids meet someone, I mean, they're nine months old. They'll be 10 months in a couple of days. Yeah. In a week. Wow. When they meet someone now, I let them shake their hand. 
every single person. If it's a person on the plane, people are like, oh, don't let. I have hand sanitizer in my th- my bag, <laughs> and they're like, can I touch the kid? I'm like, here you go, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But when they say hi, the first thing I do is I'll put their little hand out wow. and I'll say, shake their hand, say hello. They see because what I don't want is them to be looking down, mm-hmm. you know, at their phone or at an iPad or whatever the case may be. I want them like and there are so many people that come up to us in the airport that don't know I'm Sean T or Scott. Yeah. But when I'm waiting at the airport, I try as best I can if I'm not waiting for something to not necessarily be on the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, I try. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But like just a couple of days ago, we we're at the airport. Scott was in the bathroom changing one of the kids. I put the stroller down. I get down on one knee and I start talking to him while we're waiting. Like he sees people waiting around, you know, I'd start talking to Sandra. I'm like, Hey, you know, how was your flight? Did you like it? What did you dream about? They don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. And then a woman walked over and was like, Oh my gosh, like he's so cute. I'm like, thanks. You know, she's like, he's so cute. Can I say hi? I'm saying it's hi. And I say, Sandra, say hi. And I just started teaching him how to say hi. So he puts his, he goes like this. I can't even do it. He goes like this. He goes, he puts his hand out, (laughs) but I want him to read act to people and yeah. not just be a because you I still feel like the human interaction and the voice in person is mm-hmm. the strongest communication you'll ever have you know what I mean like seeing you through a screen right now is great or people listening to you or me on a podcast or me on my my videos are great but when we say we're going to be somewhere live no matter if they listen to a hundred podcasts or done a video a hundred times they still want to come what see you in the flesh and so it's different. Yeah. I say all that to say I want my kids to be real in the flesh and understand who they are in the flesh and know that whatever they put out or whatever they experience with this black mirror, <laughs> that they have to be them, you know, all the time. And I say all that to say that I can't wait to see you and your lovely lady in the flesh. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. We'll be in the same place in a couple of months. So, yeah, let's definitely yes. plan on that. We're almost out of time, though. I know we both have to go. So um, before we do, please tell folks where they can find you and what to look forward to. Yeah, so thank you. You can find me at, at Sean T on S-H-A-U-N-T on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, if you want more of my motivation and my motivation style is being able to help you provide you with belief in yourself, there's the ongoing key.com, which every Monday you get a meditation. Every Wednesday you get a motivation. We have fun Fridays and I have a special group on Facebook called the safe space where people it's a community of people that can fearlessly post whatever they want so that. They can tell people about their life and they can be transparent and everyone's there to uplift you, be honest and fill you up. There's no no hating in there. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, you can go to shantifitness.com for everything me. And I hope that people are excited for Transform 20, which uh, releases in January. But be on the lookout because I have some new things coming out regarding that early, early, which means at the end of the year. So thank you. Right on. Right on. Well, Sean, always a pleasure. It's been far too long. Let's make an excuse to do this much more often. Come back yeah, anytime, man. I mean, seriously, I love you so much, man. You're such, you're like literally one of the realest people that I know. So oh, I appreciate man, That means a lot. Love you too, Sean. And uh, please give a big extra hug to Scott for us. Hey there, listener. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Fat Burning Man Show. Now, as a special bonus to finish things off, Here's a new original tune that I wrote just for you, made up on the spot, live looped, playing a whole bunch of different instruments. I hope you get a kick out of it. Be sure to check out ablejames.com for literally hundreds more music videos, adventure tours, and much more. All right, here comes Cook Up Your Veggies in Bacon Fat. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
This episode is brought to you by listeners like you and Future Greens. You want my number one health tip right now? Get your greens in every single day. I've been getting my greens on every day for coming up on, well, almost every day, let's be honest, for coming up on almost 10 years now, and I believe it makes a monumental difference to my health, performance, and overall well-being. Why? Well, most of us eat too many acidic foods like meat, dairy, or sugar and other junk carbs, leading to an unbalanced pH level in the body and more than our fair share of toxins. I don't know if you've ever tried greens supplements, but most of them taste terrible, like fish tank. And if it doesn't taste good, I won't drink it, no matter how good it is for me, especially if you're talking every day. There are tons of supplements out there packed with cheap fats, sugar, fillers, and caffeine, but we have a much better option if you're looking to increase your energy and your health. So when Allison and I are on the road, we always take Future Greens. Future Greens is a concentrated superfood powder made from 15 organic fruits and vegetables, plus six additional superfoods, as well as digestive enzymes. So in less than 60 seconds, you can get the nutrition of over 20 fruits, veggies, and adaptogens, all with less than one gram of sugar. Future Greens is packed with vitamins, minerals, and filling prebiotic fiber from whole, organic veggies, sprouts, algaes, and berries, including kale, beet, parsley, collard greens, cauliflower sprouts, broccoli sprouts, spirulina, chlorella, blueberries, raspberries, and much more. Imagine the time and expense it would take you to buy and prepare all those foods separately. Trust us, we've tried, and Future Greens makes it a heck of a lot easier. Our ingredients are harvested at peak freshness and potency and immediately concentrated and dried using cool temperature processes that preserve the energetic and nutritional integrity of all the ingredients. Whether you're looking to strengthen your immunity, cleanse your system of toxins, alkalize your body, diversify your diet, or boost your energy without caffeine, Future Greens is your new best friend. And as a listener of Fat Burning Man, you can get a 20% discount to try Future Greens yourself. So to get Future Greens from Wild Superfoods and your special Fat Burning Man deal, just visit fatburningman.com forward slash greens to get 20% off when you subscribe and save. On top of that, you'll get an extra bonus that I can't even tell you about right now. But just visit fatburningman.com forward slash greens. We'll see you there. Well, hey there, listener. This is Abel one more time, and I just want to say thank you for listening to this episode of the Fat Burning Man Show. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button wherever you might be listening to or watching this show right now. And if you have a second, please leave me a quick review for the Fat Burning Man Show. I read every single one of them, and every time you leave a review, it gives us a little boost in the rankings, and that helps other people find this show. 
And if you can think of someone else who might enjoy and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or a family member. And if they're like, what is this fat burning man thing? That's a really silly name. You could be like, you're right, but here's the deal. We've recorded over 250 episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show with thought leaders in health from all over the world. And so far, we've won four awards, hitting number one in health in more than eight countries internationally. We have more than 30 million downloads already, but we're just getting started. I can't believe any of this, by the way, and couldn't do any of this without you. So thanks once again. But here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode of the Fat Burning Man Show for free with zero outside advertisements, no outside sponsors, and no corporate overlords. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. I'll give you a, a second here just to type it in. Fat and you'll get all the show notes, transcripts, and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show for free. Better yet, Enter your email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide so you can take your health into your own hands right now, along with a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free goodies with a bonus surprise straight to your inbox. This is Abel James signing off. Thank you so much for listening once again and have a great week.